And now the Wits Game Show. Eric Stone Street is a professional actor charged with delivering believable performances under imaginary circumstances, often playing someone the audience can relate to. Brandy Carlisle makes music that calls upon the familiar themes of heartache, relationships, childhood for her music, all things that we can also relate to. But what can they do with less plausible scenarios? This week's game is called None of Us Can Relate to That. <laughs> For people who pay attention to Wits history, it is the same game that Brandy Carlisle played a couple years ago on a show with Maria Bamford. No pressure, Eric. <laughs> I'm scared. I will give you a character and a scenario. It will be unlikely. Eric, you perform a short dramatic monologue as that character in those circumstances. Brandy will perform a heartfelt song from that same point of view. After each round, I will declare a winner. As always, my decisions will be arbitrary and capricious. How many rounds are there? Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Eric, dramatic monologue, please. You work at Chili's, but you are a ghost. You know, people come in here and they order a salad and they're like, can we get some extra bread with that? And I'm like, yeah, of course. But it's like they're looking right through me. They don't even pay attention to me. And then I bring their salad and they're always surprised that it shows up on time. And I'm like, hello, I'm right here. Can't you, can't you just connect with me just for one moment? It's like, it's like I'm a ghost or something. <laughs> oh, wait. Very nice, very nice. I like that little epilogue of, oh, wait, right at the end. That was, that was good. Brandy Carlisle, you work at Chili's, but you were a ghost. A song, please, on this topic. I can't compete with this. <laughs> I work at Chili's, but I am a ghost. <laughs> For this and many reasons There's things I miss the most No one can see me So my tips truly suck <laughs> And I love appetizers So I am out of luck Buffalo I'm, uh, I'm giving a point to Brandy, but I'm giving a half a point to Eric for his background singing. <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right, Brandy, we'll make you go first for this one. You are the new mayor of Mummy Town, but you are not a mummy yourself. It's not going well. <laughs> what? You know, Mummy Town, a town full of mummies. Like there is. There is a place called Mummy Town, and they elected me. I ain't never been no mummy, but I played one on TV. <laughs> I tried to warn old mummy town And they said that's okay Cause George Clooney ain't no doctor And Eric Stone Street ain't no gay expect me to go that is unfair I should get a point just for witnessing that <laughs> unbelievable Eric, well you know acting isn't always easy um, Eric you're the new mayor of mummy town 
You are not a mummy yourself, but yet you are charged with the office of mayor. It's not going well. Well, we just had our first uh, finance budget meeting the other day. I got to tell you, these mummies, they use a lot of gauze. <laughs> and uh, I told the council, I said, hey, man, we got to, we got to up the budget for gauze. <laughs> because these guys, they'll, they'll run around, you know, they're everywhere. And they'll be running around mummying up and doing whatnot and everything. And they'll inevitably get caught up on a tree and they'll unravel and spool around, you know. <laughs> And then we got to go out there and clean up all that gauze. <laughs> well, long story short, we upped our budget and we got more gauze and now the mummies can do the mummy in and feel comfortable about it in their own skin. We're an inclusive town. <laughs> we got a vampire last week. <laughs> oh, you know... I'm giving it to Eric Stone Street. Oh, please! No. A way to turn the audience on me! Arbitrary and capricious, you all knew the ground rules. They just hissed me. This woman literally just <laughs> hissed me. <laughs> Eric, you'll go first on this one. You have invented a grape-flavored car. A grape-flavored car? Yeah, it's a car, and it's grape-flavored. Well, today I would like to uh, sh <laughs> show you uh, the car that um, I have invented. It is a grape-flavored car. Um, go ahead and, and take a lick <laughs> of the hood. You'll notice right off the bat that it, it tastes like grape. And then if I could get you to sit on the inside, pull off that seat belt. What is that? That is grape taffy. <laughs> and just strap that across your, 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 your chest and drive away. Brandy? change the key so you don't notice it's going to be the same melody as the last one. <laughs> he's trying to throw me. He's trying to throw me. It is a competition. Used to own a cherry flavored automotive business in the land of the free. <laughs> but fruity flavored car consumers grow fickle and are moving on from cars that taste like things that grow on trees. plan will get me far I invented the world's first great flavored car Brandy Carlisle takes the round Brandy Carlisle is the winner of our game everybody let's hear it for both of our contestants who did a wonderful wonderful job <laughs>